everyone, it's Kim again from Niabi Zoo. We're here with the chickens today and the guinea fowl. She's our hope from guinea fowl. Um, so this is Red, Cheeks, and Daisy. Those are our three chickens. And then back behind the coops are, is the guinea fowl. I call her Jenny Guinea. I don't know that's her name, but I like it. So today we're going to read Chicks and Salsa. It is by Erin Reynolds and illustrated by Paulette Bogan. And I promise you're going to be very hungry at the end of this. Because I will be. But not for chickens. Not for chickens. For delicious foods. So, we shall begin. There were grumblings in the hen house of Nuthatcher Farm. The chickens were tired of chicken feed. The roosters took it upon himself to solve this problem. Hmm, he's thinking. Miss Nuthatcher, the farmer's wife, had started watching cooking shows in the afternoons. The rooster was perched on a fence post outside the farmhouse window when he discovered the solution to the problem. Salsa! My favorite! Yep, it's outside, I can't turn the page. Led by the rooster, the chickens crept into the garden where they took tomatoes and uprooted onions. That night, the chickens ate chips and salsa, though nobody were quite, was quite certain where the chicken got the chips. The tasty tang of tomatoes and onions hung over the barnyard, and the rooster said, Ole! Very soon, there were mumblings at the duck pond of Nuthatcher Farm. Inspired by the chickens, the ducks decided they were tired of fish. With the rooster's encouragement, the ducks dipped into the garden where they selected cilantro and gathered garlic. Ooh, it's hungry. That night, the ducks ate guacamole, though nobody was quite certain where the ducks got the avocados. The spicy scent of garlic and cilantro hung over the barn yard, and the ducks said, Ole! Uh-oh. The next morning, there were rumblings in the pig pen of Nuthatcher Farm. Overwhelmed by the enticing aromas, the pigs decided they were tired of sloth. While the rooster distracted farmer Nuthatcher, the pigs plodded into the garden where they borrowed beans and chopped chilies. That night, the pigs ate nachos, though nobody was quite certain where the pigs got the nacho cheese sauce, the delightful deliciousness of cheese and chi chilies hung over the barnyard, and the pig said, ole! As everyone knows, when a passion for southwestern cuisine takes hold of farm animals, and so many sumptuous, spicy, savory scents collide in the barnyard air, it can only lead to one thing. <laughs> Fiesta! I'm really hungry. <laughs> the rooster got things organized, then returned to his fence post to watch for a good enchilada recipe. The horses decorated the barn. The bull practiced his Mexican hat dance, so nobody was quite certain where the bull got the sombrero. And the chickens, ducks, pigs, and pigs snuck into the garden, but all of their spicy southwestern supplies were gone. The scallions had been stolen, the peppers had been pilfered, and the limes had been lifted. Oh no. <laughs> but there were slurpings in the kitchen at Nuthatcher nut Farm. Stirred by the succulent smells in the barnyard, Mrs. Nuthatcher had decided to make tamales for the county fair. A saucy sweetness hung over the farmhouse kitchen, and Miss Nuthatcher said, Ole! <laughs> Disappointed, the animals canceled the fiesta. That evening, the chickens ate their chicken feed, the ducks ate their fish, and the pigs ate their slop. Boo! But while the nuthatchers were at the fair, the rooster crept into the kitchen and borrowed a French cookbook. The next morning, the rooster ate crepes with white grapes and champagne sauce, though nobody was quite certain where the rooster learned how to read. <laughs> a satisfied smile stretched over the rooster's face, and the rooster said, ooh la la. Then, so I hope you guys are hungry, because I want a snack now, but enjoy your day, and we'll see you soon at Niabizu.